Welcome to Week Rinkside Report. Tell you what, it's been a crazy week in the playoffs, but we are finally down to four. Uh, we have the Montreal Canadiens in the north, the Las Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> I don't even roll your eyes. You know what I'm saving for last. I know what you're Tampa saving. Tampa Bay Bolts, who are the defending champions. People need to kind of remember that. They are very good. And then uh, the Bob New York Islanders. <laughs> New York. I wanted to say it for you, Kat. I did. Oh my gosh. What a series. Can I just like vent about it for like yep. 10 seconds? Yep. Because I really feel like the narrative for the Boston New York series was totally for New York. And I honestly, this is not just me saying this. I've talked to multiple people that happen to be Boston fans, but they listen to the mainstream broadcast and they're like, is no one calling anything that the Boston Bruins are even doing? If you, I think you had to be like a Boston fan to kind of even pick it up, but say Boston had a huge hit on Paul Mary. Okay. They wouldn't even say it, but then mm -hmm say butt chuck just like elbows someone just like you know going up against someone and they're like oh nice check on, on you know it was just like it was driving me actually insane and it wasn't even game five it was just the whole series game five in boston was i think the turning point of the downfall of the bruins because they had so many calls that went against them and then game six they go back to new york and they were in boston Bruins were in deep trouble and of course they just you know new york just lit it up in their home and it you know, it is what it is. They got outplayed. I'm not going to say that they didn't play better because Boston couldn't connect. But you know what? It's a, It was a sad, it was a sad day. Well, you, yeah. bring up a, you bring up a really good point about the national broadcast. And you know, it was terrible. Like every everybody, every city that's on the national broadcast, people always complain because these guys are like, you're so, and the way it happens is they start off maybe little neutral as soon as the game starts to tip one way they go all in with that one team totally and, and it and was it's just and really, it really went ugly. down south when they were starting when new york was starting to complain about bergeron cheating at the face off and that's when the refs picked like not picked it up but like they were kicking bergeron out of the face off for the first five and then it was just like you know we're not going to catch a break even in home ice we're not catching anything because the whole boston cheater that i heard it my entire life that Boston cheats somehow, some way. And I'm just kind of used to it, but it's, to be honest, it's really annoying. Well, it's I mean, you can caught the, count the 12 ways Tom Brady's cheated every once in a while. Here we go. Just, no, we're anyway. talking about hockey. Let's stay on hockey. It's not yeah. football season yet, yeah, but we can yeah, get to that again, later. We're, we're not even going to go there with that. But, but again, you know, let's just bring it up. I mean, Boston Red Sox had the cheater coach of the year, Alex Cora. So, I mean. Mm, I wouldn't say the year. I'd say the Astros were a little bit worse. Well, but he was involved with that too. But anyway, base, <laughs> that's baseball. We're going to move on to back to hockey. So, again, the Montreal Canadiens survived the North, and that was pretty interesting. I know a lot of people – um, were like kind of surprised by that, but I mean, Carey Price is such a great goalie. It's it's hard to count good goalies out, and you know we're seeing all the goalies are just spectacular. Honestly, yeah, they, he was on. He caught fire, and I was really surprised the Jets couldn't pull off at least one win. I, I can't believe it. they got swept. I was really kind of betting that it was going to be at least a tighter series, and the fact that the North has kind of been like sweep, sweep, sweep. It's it's questioning because I think that the West is going to beat them up completely when mm -hmm. it, when it comes to that point, but you know, who knows, maybe the Canadians are just going to take over. I, well, you know, I, I the don't thing is, is you got, you know, Corey Perry from, he used to play for the Ducks and was a great player for the Ducks. They got Shea Weber. They got some veteran guys, Carey Price, Joel Edmondson, who won a Stanley cup here in St. Louis, Jake Allen, who's their backup. Uh, he actually was very instrumental in the blues Stanley Cup because he kind of was Jordan Bennington's kind of his on ice therapist. Like he was the guy that was coaching him in the games and and, and you know getting him calm. And so you know Jake Allen has my total respect for the role he played. But you know again you look at you know Vasilevsky down in in, in Tampa Bay. You know Tuka Rask he really kept Boston in that series. Of course he didn't make it, but uh, certainly New York they got a, a high goaltender. So it it is so true. It comes down to goaltending. Um, again it kind of. Kind of sucks if you have a good team. Like I said, I thought I'm a Blues fan. I thought we had a pretty good team this year, but again, we ran into you know a, a lot of problems. And uh, it seems like all the teams that got eliminated have fallen into an injury bug or some sort of a weird situation. So, uh, but it, it does speak a little bit to 
the narratives that are created by these national media folks. And, you know, I, I, I was used to blown laugh away, at Rob. I was blown away at how bad it actually was on game six. I, I was shocked because they weren't even saying anything about Boston that was even good. Like sure. anything that was happening that was good wasn't even being spoken. And it was, it, it made me just want to like completely mute it. And I'm like, let me just announce this whole game because we're not going to get any credit for even sure. anything. And it's just like even, a lot you of people, know, they'll turn on the, the local radio broadcast. I, I wish that I had play, that it's, you know. option just at my fingertips. I, I probably could have gotten hell of that, but it is, there's something to be said about like hearing the noise of the crowd and like hearing the game. And, you know, the broadcasters are usually really good. And yeah. like you said, it, 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 sometimes it creeps up. They stay neutral in the beginning. And I think they were, but like slowly, but surely it just got bad. And it doesn't help that it's Boston, New York. Mm -hmm. And we also need to mention that Ras just announced that he has a huge hip injury. Like finally, like came out and said it, like he's going to get surgery hopefully next month. So, you know, we probably wouldn't have made it even, you know, maybe farther, even if we did win, you know, who knows how long or bad it could have potentially got, but you know, it is what it is. I just, if you're going to be an announcer on a national broadcast, you have to be neutral. You have to, like, and we all know it's all New York broadcasters. You know what I mean? Like it's all based as the well, station is based yeah. in New York. They want to see their New York team win. The one and that of course, gets all the New York people hate Boston. So it just, it just kept building up. And of course it's an entertaining game and an entertaining series, but to hear the broadcasters be so one-sided, you're not doing your job. In my opinion. Well, the one that gets me triggered is Pierre Maguire, who's supposed to be this expert, and and oh, he's yeah. a he's a real front runner. So, in other words, you know, I'm going to give you a great example of Nathan McKinnon. So, again, they, they did a lot of Blues in an Avalanche game, and again, Avalanche again, great season. I mean, we they have nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. But every game they were on the national broadcast, there was a there was a narrative created about Nathan McKinnon going for his best season. You know. Was he going to be an MVP candidate? You know, is he finally going to go to the play? Like all these questions were like creating this narrative. And then what happened? Oh, he made it to the second round again by hook or crook, whatever. Um, but then the Hart nominees came out and he is an MVP candidate. So just, to me, it just kind of like, it seems like maybe this was uh, maybe worked out. And the reason why I would say that is because the pandemic just hurt the NHL so bad. And I think they need to get viewers and they're doing it, you know, kind of the old P.T. Barnum way by hook or crook, you know, and, and creating narratives. So again, to create a Montreal Canadiens in the final four, that helps the entire Canadian market, doesn't it? To, to have a New York team really helps, or New York to have the defending champions helps helps as well. To have I Las know. Vegas. So again, you kind of look it's, at it again. It's really weird. It's really guy. weird. There's something going on and it's not okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, but we'll never know about it because it's a whole. Oh, secret I mean, I, I hope that we do. I hope something one day just gets exposed and someone comes out of, of the NHL saying, you know what, this has been going on. And, you know, no one, you know, you weren't wrong, Rob and Caitlin, you were right. You know, it goes back to that whole, the, the Tim Pills thing, the, the referee earlier in the season uh, who was caught on a live mic, you know, saying he wanted to call a couple penalties on Nashville to even up the, even up the, you remember that was earlier in the season. It was a big thing. Ooh. He ended up getting fired. And it was actually a really big controversy, but it kind of calls into question, you know, what is going on with this officiating? And are these guys le legitimate? Who's really looking into their background? Are they just a couple of guys who did, you know, junior league hockey who all of a sudden became referees? I mean, I don't know. I just think that to get to the level of the NHL or even an MB, uh, MLB umpire, you really have to have some credentials. And you know, I don't know that these guys are really examined. And again, me for baseball, you know, Angel Hernandez will always be the biggest boob ever. He's a he's an umpire and he's he's terrible and he's laughable and people laugh at him. Um, so again, I just it just to me is curious. But again, not to rain on the parades of of you know Tampa Bay of Las Vegas. Of they earned Montreal, it. They earned it fair and square, I guess. I don't know team, which we won't mention. To to go back to the refs real quick, they I feel like the narrative this playoff season has been I think old school hockey physical play. And that they've normalized that that's okay. Only certain games, though. It's weird. You can play really hard and aggressive and, like, somewhat dirty. And one team does that. And then when the other team comes back, it's like, oh, no, that's a penalty. Oh, that's slashing. We're in a, 
and again, that was like a huge factor, I feel, in the East uh, division was the penalties. And again, game five, they, you know, New York and Boston went three for three. At one point had 100% in their penalties. And on the penalties they were getting, it was just, I'm sorry, but if you're a Boston fan and if you're a fan of the game, you know that like if you honestly watch that game, you're like, wait, how? Because they yeah. were playing that the way the whole series. So yeah. again, with the penalty narrative and the ref narrative, it's like, who knows what actually goes on? behind closed conversations, but. I'm not a geek to this level, but I don't be interested to go back and look at out of all the one goal games, you know, how many late penalty or how many late power plays were called or how many, you know, times did the, did, did a penalty either decide the game or, or help a team even it up? Because I think, you know, maybe we're on to something again, maybe we're conspiracy theorists with our tinfoil hats and stuff. But <laughs> the fact is it, it, as a fan, it sucks. It's like, you're watching this. You're like, wait a minute, this guy just got creamed on the board. He lost a tooth and his eyeballs rolling at center ice. And you guys just skate on, but this other guy gets nicked with the end of a stick and yep. you know, he's writhing on the floor. Like it just, it, it, it speaks of like European soccer. <laughs> but that's not hockey though hockey no. is aggressive and it's physical and that's why we love the sport but when it comes to the calls you can't not call a huge check slam guys on the ground to nothing and like you said a slashing call or an elbow call it's like that is nothing compared to you just completely crush some guy's head <laughs> like you know, he's out I mean, for the season the thing that gets me yeah. too with Gavin is that you know if a player makes a mistake that mistake is replayed for 25, 30, 50 years. Like he, that he's known by that mistake An umpire for the most part, or a linesman or whatever, they make a call and they're just kind of, they just escape into anonymity and, and no one really goes knows after what's going on. I mean, they're just or a like, guy who goes after the refs. I feel like I never know their names. I never like do my research on the refs or the umpires or whoever, you know, it's just kind of like you trust that the league is going to put in legit people and hope that they're going to make the right calls. But again, but that's just the game. Go on forever, but again, you the get... game and that's just the part of it is getting calls, not getting calls. And, you know, there's always next season, but you can just think of like the what ifs and, yeah. Oh, what if that didn't happen? Or what if they didn't call that all those penalties? And yeah, it's better. Yeah. I mean, it's a better thing for for a lot of people to lose in, in that sort of manner to let to take the game out of the the, the players' hands and put it in the referee's hands. And, and I think that's a narrative that's going on. And guess what? You know, welcome to the new NHL. I guess. So we talk about something up. else. <laughs> Can we talk about something else? Yeah, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and wrap that up. But again, let's let's go ahead and get to our picks. I mean, I, I think it's the Golden Knights in, in Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay is gonna really put a solid or a hit on New York. I think it's gonna be probably a six-game series. I think it'll go, but uh and and I do think that I'm gonna give the, the Canadians a victory, but I think it'll be a five game or over over on that other side. So uh, I got Montreal, I'm sorry, I got Las Vegas in, in Tampa. And then, well, I guess we'll wait next week to see what our pick is. What, do you, what about you? I think those are great picks. I don't want to take New York, but at the same time, I got to respect them for just beating the Bruins, I guess. So I'm going to take New York in seven, and I'm going to, I'm going to do Vegas in six. I think you're spot on with that, if not five, maybe four. I think Vegas is had they have the momentum they got a solid solid team and I think Flurry's he can be a little shaky but I feel like he's so solid and you know he he beats himself up more than anyone I feel and you could see the frustration on the ice for him but I think he's so good and all the goalies all four goalies I think are going to shine and that's going to be a huge obviously a huge component to this to the rest of the playoffs is goalies staying healthy and players staying healthy not only from covid but injuries majorly <laughs> injuries primarily because that's what took out also the, the bruins i'm not i'm gonna stop talking about the bruins but you know i just hope that people can just have fair games and and stay healthy because that's what kills it for these teams and i hate to see teams go down because you know, guys are sick or guys are hurt, right? I want to see fair, fair, even games. Sure. And again, I think the thing that, that gets us going about the NHL is that, you know, um, number one, there are fans in the stands. So that was really exciting to see and the noise levels and the energy and all that, you know, we miss that. 
that was gone from us. That was taken from us. So to see that energy, so again, not complaining about the experience, not complaining about the NHL. I mean, hats off to get the fans in there and, and get everybody excited and fired up. That was a win. So again, I know we kind of come down on the league, but I, that was a win to see fans in the stands and, and right. just feel like the, the Vegas arena just like shaking on TV at the, at the winning minutes of that game was crazy. Absolutely. And I could say that about every state. New York was absolutely insane. I thought Tampa Bay and Carolina was insane. And North obviously didn't have very many people towards the end, but they finally got some people in the stands. I saw they just approved them to come. Everything's good. They can come here now. We can kind of go there, I think. So I don't know how many fans they're going to have in the stands, but they're going to, I think that's why I think they're going to get their their butts whooped is they're going to be overwhelmed by the Vegas crowd when they come to Vegas. And it's going to be like zero to like full volume blast in that, in that stadium. Well, I'll tell you what, they had a huge party in Montreal after they won oh and my uh, gosh. like went viral, the videos and all that stuff. Yep. So again, looking forward to being a great week. Uh, you know, hopefully you guys are having great weather out there in California. It's starting to get nice here where I'm at. So we're going to wrap up this segment, catch up with you guys next time.